Fuck both of you. Okay. E4. Sicilian. Good thing I know how to play against this. Sort of. <laughs> okay, then a nice will punish me for my bad open. So, I'll just develop, get ready to castle. Let's go B5. Well, that's cool. Hmm. I'm thinking I might go bishop D5. Threaten the rook. Get a good spot for my bishop. He can always push it back with a pawn, but I could just retreat. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So, uh, really bad opening, so I have no choice than rock a7, I think. Okay, but just is for the open. Yeah, I think a7 is the best. Yeah. Not an unexpected move. I guess I'll castle then. Or maybe not. Maybe I should open up a... Maybe I should go a3 to give my bishop a polite square. Because I prized if he pushed his pawn and I lost my bishop. So yeah, I'm gonna go a3. Close that bishop with a6. Our thoughts will be trying to exchange with bishop d7, but I need to develop some of my pieces before. I don't know if bishop b7 he prepared his bishop to be on. A2, I think, but A6, bishop, A2, and I close that bishop with C4, and start moving my minor pieces, try to call the bad opening, I think I will go for that E6. Yep. Uh, I don't think I have any other option except to move my bishop back. So that's what I'm going to do.
So C4, B3, and the bishop is again free. I don't think, I think I have to start developing my pieces before but it's not really a trap on that bishop, so I think I will go to fight for that b5 square. I think knight b6, ideas of Rock is in a bad spot. I think knight c6, bishop c7, queen c7, and then go back with the rock and put it on c8 and start developing my king side. Then I think his next move would be castle. So let's go with the knight. Developing my pieces. Yeah, knight c6. Hmm. I think I've delayed castling out long enough. I'll do it now. Castle. Mm. I think knight f6 would be good here. I don't know if bishop d7 first, but I don't see any. Mm. Yeah, I think I will start attacking the pawn. But yeah, and I f6, then bishop e7 and castle. And I think I will be home. I had a feeling he was going to do that, so. He is threatening to come in to an annoying square. At least it will. It could be eventually annoying. It's not. It's not annoying at the moment, though. At least not as far as I can see. It would become annoying if he moved in his queen. So maybe I should just stop him from getting there. Probably doesn't hurt. H3. I don't know what this is up to. I know if he is going to expand on the king side with g4. Um, I'm thinking bishop e7 and then castle. Uh, b5 now, right away, if e5, knight d7, attacking the pawn again, two times, and then with the ideas of c4 to trap that bishop, I like the idea of d5 right now or maybe start castle with bishop e7 i don't know what which move is better now um, d5 if takes 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 d5 he takes d, knight takes d5, knight takes d5, I have to take with the e pawn, 
and my king is a little bit worried but I want to have one check, rock check I have bishop e7 So d5 exchange, knight takes pawn, knight takes pawn, e pawn takes knight, rook check, bishop e7. I think I am missing anything. So, good ideas of c4 then for trap that bishop. I think this is fine. If pawn e5, I would go knight d5 and attack that pawn two times. And this one. Unfortunately, I was thinking about pushing d4, and now I don't think I can. So, what does this do? He's going to open up the center before castling. I'm not sure how wise that is. He might be planning to push it again so he can displace my knight or I might just plan on jumping in with his knight, I'm not sure. Hmm. Trying to see where my knight could go if it's displaced, if it's really a, a problem at all with that pawn on d4, if I push d3 instead. I'm not worried about trading queens if he opens it up completely. I do have my rook, I, would, I just have a rook there on the d-file, which isn't bad. He might be planning to move uh, rook d7 though, which would be worse for me. But he would, he would give me time to get my queen out of the way. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna push d3 because it also lets me get my bishop out, which it needs to get out. <laughs> and I don't really see the a huge problem with the uh, pawn on d4, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so he protects the pawn. So, ideas here. Uh, d4, knight, e2. I think I have to move that bishop to start castling because I'm start playing more safely than now. Uh, if pawn takes, 
Bishop e7 preparing for casting or oh, Bishop d6 opening up okay. to an e5 I don't know if it is correct ah but I lose I lose d5 so I think I will go for casting Missing something? No, I don't know. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What about h6 preventing the bishop? Oh, it's the same. So he doesn't actually want to open the center, he wants to castle first. Which means that I want to stop a move castling, because that's the best thing ever. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can do that though. I can delay him from castling for at least a turn though. I'm thinking about maybe pushing e5. It would displace his knight, or he would uh, take it with his knight and have, have let me have uh, my knight on my on the e5 square, which is pretty good place when he's about to castle. Um, if he moves it, I could find some place to put my knight and put his knight in jeopardy, because unless he's going to stop himself from castling or oh. There's a spot he can move. That doesn't help me very much. <laughs> he could just move to d7. But if he moves to d7, then he has one less attacker, as I do, on the d4, d5 pawn. <laughs> but if I push d4 now... What does that get me? He can take my pawn, I can take it back with my knight, he can take that pawn, and then it's protected by two defenders. I think I might just win a free pawn here, I have to calculate it more though. Nope, if I take if he takes my e4 pawn, I don't really have anything to say about that. So I might want to protect it.
Yeah, I'm gonna play rookie one. Okay, so rookie one. E takes D. E takes D. One takes four. Knight takes four. Knight takes. Pawn takes knight. And bishop could be bishop c c five king knight. Let me calculate this. Know what I, what I'm missing? What about b four? Knight e2 blocking the rock and then f4 no 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 h6 and then castle castle and then h6 um, I'm missing something here. No, uh, Castle H6, H6, Pawn H6, Pawn takes, Knight takes, Knight takes, E Pawn takes, and I have two defenders of the bishop if I don't castle. If bishop she five ah if bishop if bishop she five I have to move I lost my b five because bishop takes knight uh, and then he can take on d five so I think now is H6 and then castle. I don't know if I'm missing something, but I think it is H is correct. H6. So apparently, he doesn't want my rook to go. My, I mean, my uh, knight or bishop to go to g5. Good thing I wasn't planning that because that doesn't actually help me very much in the first place. So I'm still thinking about pushing d4, and I think it's a good move for me. It opens up the center before he's castled, which he keeps on putting off. And I get some files for me to operate on. Yep, I'm gonna go d4. So C4 comes immediately, I think. What about C takes, C takes, Knight takes, Knight takes, Queen D4. I have a big center, so B takes E, uh, Knight takes, Knight takes, Rock takes, same. So I think c4 is the best move here. I don't know if I'm missing something. Uh, although, what about castle? If he takes, I take with the bishop on c5. And I have a, a nice. Oh, but then my rock is spinning, so the only attacker would be the bishop on e3. I have to exchange the bishop and 
I don't think I would like that. So I think pawn up is best choice. But what about B3 then? If B3. I have, I have to take it. Takes uh, okay. C four, B three, B take uh, C four, B three. No, I'll go for C four. I think it's the best choice here. Missing something, I don't know. The problem is E5 then. If E5, I have to start attacking that D4 pawn, I think. So C4 here, I think. Well, that's a move I wasn't expecting. I guess he doesn't want to open it up. I could get a pawn, a protected pawn on e5. Could also get a knight on e5, trade his knight, then get a double pawn on e4 and 5. I'm pretty sure taking d5 doesn't do anything for me. He can just take it with his knight, take it with my knight, or he can take it with his pawn even. And taking it with the pawn... I don't think I can apply any more pressure on his bishop before he castles. I could push b3 and open it up that way. I have way more attackers than he has defenders. It, or defenders than he has attackers. It would, he'd probably take it with b5. But I'm not sure where that gets me. I can move my rook over and have a file on b. Which isn't bad, but I'm not sure where I go from there. Well, there's an idea. I could take d5, and if he takes it with his knight, I could move. I could go knight e5, and if he takes my knight with his knight, I could pin his knight to his queen by taking with my pawn. Well, if he takes it with his queen, I'm not sure. I could just take it with his knight again with my knight. So takes it
Who takes it with his pawn? I had just pinned this bishop to his king. That's not bad, I guess. And then I can develop my bishop. Let's do it. Open up the center. Okay, he takes. So. The idea was knight takes d, knight takes, e takes. And then start attacking the b4 pawn. My knight is protecting the bishop. Or maybe I can knight takes pawn, knight takes knight, queen takes. D five. But I don't like my queen on that spot. Um, although it's centralized, but. I think I go with the idea of knight takes pawn Yeah, I think this is correct What I am missing I have e5 covered by the knight What about e takes d first? e takes d. And then castle. But then I have to take care of that d5 pawn. <sighs> My rock is. Oh, wait. Ideally, my rook have to be on d7, I think, or c7, and then my bishop on d7 to protect the d5 pawn. If I take with the pawn, pawn takes pawn, and what would be what next next move? I don't think he can put pressure on my king. I have my bishop is protected with knight queen and rock is protecting the e7 bishop. Okay, so knight or pawn takes there. And my time two minutes. Oh. If knight takes, I open the e file for the rock. Okay, well, I open. Uh, e takes d, knight takes, knight takes. If I take with the pawn, that knight has only one square on e2. I have to relocate the knight and probably will end on f4. I have to protect that. And I'm seeing ghost. Okay, 11 minutes. Uh, Okay, I go for e takes d with the idea of protect that pawn with bishop b7 and rock on d7 there and then castle something like that I think I have enough protection for the bishop if queen go to e2 and let's go with the pawn yeah 
So he took with his pawn. Seems all right. What to do next? I could move knight e5 to threaten his knight. He takes it. I take it with my pawn. Threaten his knight with a tempo. I might win that d5 pawn yet. After he moves with that. What are his other options? He could just move his knight, but then I have a fork on the queen and the rook, which is nice. I'm pretty sure he can only take it with his knight, but I don't see any of the options. So if he takes it with his knight, and then I move my pawn, does he have any options after he could threaten my knight with his pawn in response to that by pushing his pawn? And then I could just take it with my... No, I couldn't. Uh, I wouldn't have a knight there anymore. So that pawn would be untakeable. But it would completely wreck his king's side if I were to take his knight with my pawn and trade knights. He would wreck my queen's side, but I would wreck his king's side, which is where he looks to be trying to castle. So I think I might do it anyway. Let's do it. I don't see the harm. Okay, so I think I have to take that knight and fight for the isolated pawn. Rook takes, I challenge with knight d7 right away. Or castle first. What about if I don't take the knight and do an error? What about? Knight sacrifice on s7. I have to take with the king. Uh, then I could easily manual castle. So I have to take that knight, I think. Uh, what I am missing? I'm missing something. So when I take knight on. No, I think rock takes knight, knight d7, rook back, I think. If pawn takes, if pawn takes, I think that pawn is lost, because on knight takes knight, Knight D seven. I think I can win that. I think Knight X nine is best. 
I have this seven cover by the queen. Oh no 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 no. Knight takes knight, pawn takes, knight d7, and then knight c3 takes d5 and losing a pawn. Uh oh. So I have knight takes knight, pawn takes. I think I have to go. Knight D, Knight J5, no, Knight. Uh oh, fair means. Uh, knight takes Knight, Pawn takes Knight. I have to move my Knight not on D7 because I lose D5 Pawn. I can go on. E4, E4, Knight is Knight, no, doesn't work. What about Knight takes Knight, Pawn takes Knight, Knight to H7, and then Castle. I'm not, I don't like, but that might have to, is too centralized, okay. Let me move and then I will think what I... Uh, okay. He took it, so I guess I'm going to take it back. And threaten his knight there. And possibly win that d5 pawn. Just looking at alternate moves at the moment, minute I could take it with my rook, but seems risky. Pawn seems like the best option, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I think I have no more choice than knight h7. What about? No, I'm losing a pawn again because knight. E4, knight takes knight, d takes 4, queen takes queen. Uh, I think bad square for a knight, but. Ideas of g5 then. Yeah. Knight takes knight. So we move back there. I think I just win this d5 pawn. He could threaten it and then make me move my knight and then trade queens, give me the d file. Aside from that, I don't see any threats. I could also push the pawn and wreck his king side. But I'm not sure if that's worth it, because then I'd have to get my rook all the way out there, and I don't have my other rook developed yet to protect it. So. I do believe I'm just going to take this pawn. Never mind. It's a trap. <laughs> he can t he can move his rook. And then my knight will be pinned. Good thing I noticed that. So what do I do instead? Could develop my bishop. Could push the pawn as stated before. I don't even know what I'm saying. That doesn't wreck his king side. <laughs> that just loses me a pawn. Have any threats after rook d7? Maybe I should move my queen somewhere before I take the pawn. Or maybe I just take the pawn with my queen. 
That way it can't be pinned and he can only take it with his queen if he wants. And he doesn't have the option to pin anything. And I get my queen active. Active queens are nice. He could threaten it with his bishop. Actually, that might be a dead queen. <laughs> dead queens are not as fun as active queens. Well, if he threatens with his bishop, I could just take his queen. If he blocks with his rook, then... What do I do if he blocks with his rook? Maybe I pawn push, and then I do wreck his king side in exchange for my queen. But that, and that doesn't seem like the best trade. If I take the pawn with my queen, I pretty much seed the seed it, seed the D file to him, at least for the moment. Am I okay with that? I'd go up a pawn. I might lose my E pawn though. Hmm. Where does my dark square bishop need to be? Where does it want to be, rather? Does it want to be f4? Like, I could attack the rook with tempo, but he could also just block with the pawn, and then I'd get the pawn, and then he could pin the bishop to my queen, which is not ideal. So, it probably wants to go to f4. I don't see a better place for it at the moment. And he could just, but like he could wreck his own king side in order to threaten it. But I don't see that happening in the near future. If I move my bishop, he could threaten my knight, make me move it, push his pawn. I'll develop my bishop. I think I'm in a pretty good spot at the moment. Let's do it. Okay, so I think bishop e7, e6 to protect d5 and then castle. I think it's the best choice here. I think uh, I missed that the knight could take on d5 but i think that rock d7 pin the knight and that knight is completely lost that's why i think he didn't take on d5 so i think s bishop e6 is best and then yes i think i will castle and i think i'm, I'm fine here So he doesn't want me to take that pawn. Makes sense. So I can still take his pawn if I apply more pressure and he does not do the same. But he is likely to apply pressure, I believe. He has also stopped me from pushing my pawn, which is mildly annoying. Well, that's something I could do. I could go knight e2, knight d4, knight, knight c6. But I'm not sure if I have the time to do it. So we'll probably see it coming from a mile away. But it might 
look like I'm just trying to protect it if he tries to push the pawn. I'm not sure. If I ever get my knight to c6, I fork everything, so that's nice. It will give him the time to castle. I could also push my c. I could also push c3 to eventually get my bishop out of there, and his knight's trapped over there. That's nice. I really want to get my rook to d. My my, my a rook to d. Though. So I'm not sure what I should do first. Also, I'm not sure where I want to put my queen, so I can put my rook on d1. Everywhere seems like a threatenable square for my queen, except possibly f3. That seems like the safest spot. Even on f3, he can push, he can bring his knight down and threaten it and be annoying. I guess I could go queen d2, but then I still have the same pin problems, which is why, I, which is one of the reasons I want to move my queen in the first place. I'm gonna go queen f3. Has one, two defenders and one, two attackers. I don't know what the idea is, but I think work <coughs> d7 to protect. And I don't know if castle now is a good idea. I think I should help castle earlier. So work d7. I think is correct. What's white's ideas? I think he has he wants to put pressure with rock D one and I have one two three one two three uh, uh, I don't know. I think he's going to level up there, so... Okay, three minutes, so... Rock D7, I think, here. With the ideas of if he's going to double up there, Bishop E6 and pawn up. Uh, I don't know. Rock this in no time. Okay, he did that. I'm going to go rook a d1. And then I'm going to start moving my pieces out. Yeah, that was the move I expect, so... Then... Knight takes... One, two, three, six, takes... I'm still better. I think now I'm going... Castle. Unless okay, I will prepare. Let me castle first. I have cover. Yeah, let me castle first. He finally castled. So. Let's see. I think I'm gonna... I can't take the pawn at the moment. So I think I might enact plan knight rerouting to blockade the pawn at the moment and then move out my bishop. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's 
so he's going to roll out the night I think uh oh two minutes uh, bishop c5 trying to prevent that knight coming there yeah I wonder what he's threatening there. Oh, he doesn't want me to get my knight there because he saw it instantly, like I said he would. Okay, so he doesn't really have any threats there. But I can stop him from pushing the pawn, which he might be trying to do, by pushing the C pawn and then threatening the knight if he decides to push it first, and then I just win material. Unfortunately, like that pawn chain is going to start being a thorn in my side, so I'm going to have to start exterminating it after I develop my bishop out. I think. Okay, now the bishop is going to go. So, 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 so. What about bishop f5 preventing this? Yeah. So he doesn't want me to do that either. He's not being fun at the moment. Let's see. I could try to push the bishop away. I would probably just move back. Let's see. If I do, if I continue Operation Knight Rerouting, I could threaten the bishop. He could take it. I could take it with my rook and start getting my rook over on the king side. I could also take it with the pawn and get my other central center pawn protected for the for the meanwhile. Uh. He could come in with his bishop and threaten my rook. I guess. Honestly, I don't really, I don't really mind trading that my bishop for his bishop. His bishop is better. Oh shit! I'm low on time. <laughs> I should really stop thinking. Okay. Okay, this black time, I think. Uh, let's rewrite. This is the choice. Um, I have to take the pawn. Um, protect. Protect the rock. Protect the pawn. Time warning. I have unmuted Skype. Hello. 
I lost. <laughs> oh. Okay, hold on a second. Let me, uh... I got, I got logged out just as you lost. <laughs> so... Uh, let me... Let me, uh... Get the game. Uh... Set you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay. Let's go over the game. Uh, I, I wish you guys had had more time, because that was a really interesting game. I'm uh, a time traveler. I time traveled too far. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I thought I had three minutes. <laughs> now I have 30 seconds. Okay. So let's analyze this. So I'll invite both you guys to the analysis board. Hold on one second. Okay, so I'm gonna invite you. And then I'll invite I think you. I defend all the game and forget to attack. Yeah, I, no, I mean it's really a boring game from Black because I don't, de I didn't attack anything. I well, only defend. No, you attacked the queen side. You had a lot, a lot going on the queen side. So, okay, let me invite you to the analysis board. Okay, so you should have gotten the invite. I am there. Okay, let me. Okay, so you guys can both see the board now, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about what happened in the game. Cause some interesting stuff. Okay, so it was a Sicilian. Okay, this is all fine. Knight c3, fine. Okay, a6. So when, when, uh, when Black plays this move a6, you have to ask yourself, do I really want to move my bishop to c4? And the answer is probably not, because at the very least, Black is preparing to play this move b5, right? Mm -hmm. And so by playing bishop c4, you're kind of giving him a, a free tempo on your bishop, and uh, he clearly wants to expand on the queen side. So rather than play bishop c4, what could you have done in this position instead? Um, move my bishop somewhere else. Mm, okay. Uh, how about how about saying say let's say you do want to put your bishop on c4. Is there something you could do to prepare that move? Um, b3. Mm, well, how does that prepare it? I mean, uh, a4 rather. Yeah, a4. Good. And now notice that he can't ever play b5 because you can simply take, and you have three guys on mm -hmm. this, and he only has one defender. So after he after you play a move like a4, okay, say he develops and plays, I don't know, knight f6 or something. Okay, now now you can play a move like bishop c4. And now notice that there's never a, a, a worry about a b5 coming. So um, say so always be careful and think about what your opponent's doing because I mean he kind of played the move a6 with the express intent of discouraging you from playing bishop c4 immediately. So, when you played bishop c4, uh, he basically got a free tempo on your bishop. And so, now it looks weird because you developed three pieces, and he hasn't developed a single one, but uh, his position is actually fine because he's gaining a tempo on your bishop and forcing it to move to an awkward square. So you played bishop d5, which is forced, and now he played a good move, rook i7, uh, pretty much forced, but it's, it's good. And, but now notice that your bishop is running very short in squares. So it has zero squares. Yeah. So do you notice? Well, <laughs> so it has b three. But do you notice what he's threatening now? Um. So uh, if I moved at b three. Well, no, no. I'm saying your bishop only has one square at b three. But say, say you move, made a move like castle. What can he do to win your bishop now? Uh, e e six. Right, and then if you play bishop b three. Yeah. That, that's why I'm saying it has no it has no squares. Well. So yeah. So uh, so what I'm trying to get you to say is. Bishop b3 yeah. and now, yeah. now it's trapped, that's, right? That's why, my, that's why my next move was a3. Right, okay. But you actually forgot about something because yeah. when you play the move a3, you actually didn't help this guy at all. Because what should black play here? Setch, do you know what you should have played here? c4? Mm hmm. Yeah, c4. c4. So now, how, how's this bishop going to get out? Well, the question. answer is it isn't. If you try to play e5, e6, bishop e4, 
d5, all of a sudden, uh, this bishop has no squares again. So black could have actually trapped your bishop with a3. So instead of a3, what should you have played in this position? So you have a you have a way to save your bishop, but you need to find. You, you had the right idea, but. Uh, Do I have to move to bishop to b three immediately? No, because again, he can trap it with c four. Yeah. So you want you want to you want to give the a two square for your bishop, but what's the difference when you play this move? Oh yeah. So now the point is when he plays c four, now you have time to take this. Right. And now you give your this square, and if he plays e six. Now, okay, now you have opportunity to move your bishop back, and now you're safe. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So, yeah, again, very small nuance, the difference between saving your bishop and not saving your bishop. So, after a3, uh, Set should have played c4 and trapped your bishop, but he played the move... Yeah. Oops, so he played... Uh, e6. e6. Which is somewhere... Oh yeah, here. Okay, sorry. There's too many variations. Okay, so yeah, e6. So he had the right idea, but the wrong move order. Because now the bishop can go to a2, and it's kind of out of the game, but it's temporary. It's not. It's not permanent. So it's okay. really it's really hard for me to see moves like a4 and and like when I'm when I'm advancing upon two squares, it always seems really weak to me. Because <laughs> it seems like it's going to be really easy to win. Yeah, but, I mean, notice your a4 pawn is defended twice, and, yeah. I mean, it's more important to kind of put pressure on this b5 pawn so that your bishop can have a freedom to move back. Okay, so knight c6, you castled, which made sense. Okay, knight f6. Okay, so in this position, um, what's your biggest problem right now as white? Lack of control of the center. Mm, I mean, I, I guess so. But which which piece of yours is going to be in the most trouble in the future? Um, either my knight or my bishop. Right. So it's actually going to be this guy. Because uh -huh. notice that it really doesn't have any squares. And this diagonal is going to be kind of close to it for the foreseeable future. So you want to try to kind of think about a way you can maybe get this guy into the game. So um, so for example, if you play a move like d4, then say after black plays c4, all of a sudden your bishop is close to getting entombed, right? Yeah. So, um, so maybe a move like d3 here, just to kind of keep control over the c4 square temporarily. And then, well, like my plan was eventually to pu push c3 and then get it out that way. Right, 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 right. But the problem is, if you play c3 too early, without having yeah, that, played d3, why. then when he plays that, c4, all of a sudden these squares on b3 and d3 become weak. So I that's why I waited until later to. Yeah, exactly, push. exactly. But you should start thinking about that now. So, mm -hmm. the problem is your move that you played h3 doesn't actually do anything for your position, and it's not really stopping any threats that black was going to have so you want to make sure you don't waste tempi by especially in the opening when you haven't developed your pieces so i guess i guess that, that d3 is better than yeah j just you I know because it gives this guy a future and then you're you're planning well the the real idea with d3 is you're defending this e4 pawn so now you yeah. can move this knight away and then you can push this pawn then you can move this bishop up and, and, you know, it's a slow process to get your pieces out, but it's not like black is doing anything so constructive. I mean, he's probably going to be playing bishop e7, castle, bishop b7. So you have time to kind of rearrange your pieces accordingly. Um, but again, you have to start doing that. And a move like h3 doesn't exactly take care of it. So okay. here, after h3, Sech played d5. And I'm a little surprised that he didn't just, like, continue developing with bishop e7 and castle. But, um, like, I'm surprised he was willing to open up the center even though his king was two moves from castling, but I don't think you can necessarily take advantage of it. So yeah. d5, d3 was a good move. Bishop e7. Uh, and now I, I like rook e1 a lot. You're, you're, you're defending the e-pawn. h6. Okay, so I'm not sure why he played h6 either. So you guys both made these mysterious 
each pawn moves. Again, if he just castles here, I think I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I think I castle two and move twenty. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm I surprised. Need to castle earlier. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah. you didn't castle now. I mean, it seems like well, I mean, what were you afraid of? I mean, this move doesn't really I was do anything, right? About yeah, and um, in my calculation, this I think are wrong. I think he could end up with one pawn up in if all the exchanges happen. I think I don't know if it is correct. Uh, so you're saying if all exchanges happen, then you were worried about what this pawn or? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but I mean, you can always you can always push it, right? Uh, and then this bishop yeah. is still kind of stuck. Yeah, I didn't see that. I I, I think the, I I will lose uh, the d5 pawn, and I am not castle yet. So I think now it's time for castle, and then h6. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. Think... But okay, so now in this position. You play this move d4, which kind of surprised me, but um, but I'm not sure what you should do instead. M maybe so. Uh, my my the whole idea the whole idea is what you should be trying to do. Is to play this idea. So you want to eventually play like this, like this, and like this, right? But the move you made doesn't really help you in that in that uh in that pursuit. So maybe a move like e5 here. Well, I was realizing that he wasn't castling and he was taking a long time. So right, I, I right. But the problem is right d4 unfortunately opens up the center in a way that's not good for you. So, like, the problem is when you play d4, I think he can just, like, take here and then take here or something. If he takes there, uh, if, if he takes e5, uh, e4, I can go knight e5, threatening the fork. So then he has to move his knight. So he can't just take d, d, uh, d4 without... Being, without losing an exchange. So wait, so what were, we, what were we intending if he took on e4 in this position? Uh, knight e5. Knight e f wait, knight takes e4 you mean, or? Knight e5. Oh, you're gonna play knight e5 here? Yeah. Oh, I see. But then what if he plays this? That's a very good question. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I don't think I would have try to make things more complicated in the center. Uh, but again, a move like e5 does a lot because it kind of chases this knight from its natural outpost on f6. And, and notice that like you can actually get some sort of kingside attack brewing. So say, say you play e5. I'm just going to show you like sample things. So knight fd7 or knight d7. Now you want to defend this guy. So bishop f4. Say he castles. You play knight e2. He plays, say, bishop b7. You play bishop, or say you play even c3. He plays, say, I don't know, queen c7 maybe. And now all of a sudden, like d4, c4, bishop b1. And now notice you have this whole idea. And I think your position is quite good. I have a feeling that he wouldn't let me, like, I think it would push a pawn before I would be able to push d4. Mm. Which is something I was looking at. Well, he thought he was going to push here? Yeah. But the problem is you have three defenders on it, and he only has two attackers, so it just loses a pawn. But, which is why knight e2 is so important, because it, it, it establishes uh -huh. control over the d4 square. So I'll show you what, what you could have done later in the game, but yeah, really paramount in this game was controlling that d4 square. So uh, let me get back to what happens. But I think d4 was premature. And then after... Uh, what did he play? He played... You played c4 here, Setch? I don't remember. I think you played c4, and then, yeah, and then he played e takes d5. Yeah, he did. Right. Okay. So now e takes d5, and now I thought e takes d5 was a good move, because you're getting your bishop uh, life on this diagonal, which is important. 
Yeah. So now 95. Okay. Um. I take the night because I think it was. Yeah, I, I think 95 yeah, is actually okay. a good move, but I don't think you can take, actually. I don't think you can take because when you take you actually end up losing this d5 pawn so i think you have to play a move like queen to b6 just to defend the knight um so i, I thought he might lose the d5 pawn but then but, well he would lose it but then i didn't want my uh, knight to be pinned by queen right well I, I, so i'll I yeah i'll get to that in a second but i'm trying to show such that yeah he couldn't have taken the knight and i, I was actually thinking that you can actually play this move Knight b8. It looks odd, but like this knight that isn't really doing anything. Uh, like it looks pretty, but it's not really doing anything. So next move you're just gonna castle, and then you're gonna play queen c7, and then maybe bishop d6, and knight knight d7, and all of a sudden you're getting your, all your pieces out. Because um, notice that white still hasn't developed these guys, so you you don't have to worry too much about undeveloping your knight. But um, okay. But anyway, so when you take, unfortunately, he can take on d5 because after knight h7. Now this pawn is hanging. So uh, I noticed, Espella, you thought about this one and were worried about this, which is correct, but you can also take with the queen. Yeah, I saw that too, but then, like, if he moves his rook over... Right, okay, so if he moves his rook over, sure okay, so can... now you can just play a move like queen f3. And then he can play a move like bishop b7. Good, right, okay, now you play a move like queen g3. And now all of a sudden, he's actually in some trouble. Okay. Right? Because if he castles, you can play this move. I, it didn't look like... When he played bishop b7, I wasn't sure if that if having my queen there would be a good idea. Yeah. It, like, well, I mean, the, the problem answer. is, in this position, uh, in, in this position right here, if you don't take this pawn, you're just, like, miles worse in the position because these guys are, are rather silly. So, okay. you know, if it turns out that black has sufficient compensation for the pawn then okay he has sufficient compensation but you you have to do something to make your position somewhat favorable and you know taking material is probably the best thing you can do here so i, I can understand why you're a little hesitant to get your queen you know kind of involved in the game like that but i mean it it, it did have you know a natural retreat and you are threatening to trade queens which is something that would help you because mm -hmm. once the queens are traded you can kind of just worry about getting your pieces out um but yeah, once you didn't take... Oh, sorry. So you played bishop f4. And again, I'm not exactly sure why you played bishop f4. I understand you wanted to develop, but... I'm not entirely sure the f4 is the best square. Like, at the very least, why not, like, bishop e3? At least gaining a tempo on the rook. Because then he would pre play uh, d4? Well, then you just take, right? Because you have two attackers and he only has one defender. Yeah, but then, uh, again... Rook d7. And... Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this rook e7 move wasn't something you actually needed to worry about. Because, okay, say bishop e3, d4, queen d4, rook d7. Now you have queen b6, which forces a trade of queens. And now you're just up a pawn. So, um, so yeah, don't, don't be afraid of ghosts. Because after bishop e6... Okay, now this is a critical point in the game. Because you really need to stem the tide because this pawn is very dangerous if it can start advancing so what you need to do is establish firm control over this d4 square so do you see a way you can do that um do you want me to move queen d4 <laughs> uh i mean it's fine but notice that that if you play queen d4 it's only temporary right because yeah. okay so queen d4 rook c7 and now i'm playing this move next yeah okay so is there Which something is you can I do that's maybe that. a little bit more permanent I'd... faster than my 92 knight uh d4 move well in the game you played this move don't forget oh i did yeah you're right so no okay. but i noticed when you were talking you mentioned that this would was a good idea and yeah. it is a good idea but then you ended up playing queen f3 so your, your whole setup you want to do is you want to play knight e2, knight d4, c3, and bishop b1 again. And now you have this monster diagonal for your bishop. Yeah. And furthermore, you're kind of blockading his pawns, so you're making this guy a little useless, and you're even making this guy on e7 a little weird. But you need to establish a blockade as, as soon as possible. So, uh, but unfortunately, by playing this move queen f3, you kind of waste the critical tempo. And now, all of a sudden, after rook d7, you're never getting a piece on d4 in time. And... 
now that pawn that pawn is becoming too fast and your pieces are kind of having to retreat because of it so you had like one chance in the position to kind of fix his pawns and get your pieces on good squares so you kind of have to take advantage of that because after rook d7 which is a good move rook a d1 and castle okay so finally he decided to castle but notice now you can never really construct a blockade on d4 because if you play say like rook d4 for example he can just play bishop c5 and chase it away so knight e2 was good but now unfortunately it's one move too late because here he should probably just play d4 and i know i know you guys are both very short in time at this point um and i think for future uh amateurs minds i'll have to make sure you guys play with an increment because I know you guys are kind of just moving here, but uh, if he plays d4 right away, now he doesn't allow you to play this move. But after bishop c5, now you can actually still play this move. And now you can kind of blockade with your rook or something, and it's it's not as terrible as in the game. So uh, after c3, bishop f5, bishop b1, take, take, uh, rook e8, rook d1. Okay, so now he's trying to get his knight here, which is smart, because he wants to control this square. Knight d4, okay, so you blockade, which is good. But now the problem is, look at this bishop. It's kind of stuck looking at these pawns. Notice that most of your pawns are in dark squares. Yeah. So you kind of have a good bad bishop here, and he has a good knight because it's blockading this pawn. So now he has a simple plan to just play a5, b4, c3, and just uh, promote his pawn. Um, Mr. Free Pawn, what are you guys talking about? Oh, wait. No, he... Wait, where's a free pawn? Sorry, I was reading the chat real fast, and they said there's a free pawn, but I don't know what they're talking about. Oh, instead of bishop b1, take bishop six h6. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, right. So you so you had a you had a little bit of a tactic here, which is you could take this pawn, and then oh. and then if he takes, you can take his bishop. And if he plays bishop e4 to try to defend the bishop with a gain of tempo, you have this move queen g3, which pins this pawn. So, so you, you could have won a pawn there, but again, it was a it was a time scramble. So let me just get to the end. Uh, so yeah, again, good bishop or bad good knight versus bad bishop. Uh, and he gives you actually a huge chance. He, he should keep his knight on e6 and just play a move like king h7 or something. But now he gives you an opportunity to trade it, which is probably good for you. So you took that opportunity, which was good. And now I'm maybe a move like I'm e6. Out of time. <laughs> Yeah, I know you had no time here, but... I had, like... Yeah, like, six seconds. Six, yeah, I know. Six tenths of a second. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, I think e6 would be good here, just to kind of activate your rooks, but... Okay. Uh, so you played rook e3, and then rook g3, and... Yeah, and then you flag. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was a really interesting game. It was kind of like the battle of your piece development versus Setch's pawn development. And... Uh, and yeah, just need to make sure you kind of strive to get better places for your pieces. Otherwise, those pawns get rolling down the board quickly, and then your pieces have no place to go. So, um, I, I didn't see that queen exchange. I think if that happened, I probably would lost the game. Yeah, but it's it's very possible. I think on d five. Queen exchange, knight takes on d5, and I think there I'm completely lost. I'm not castle, and my pieces are not as good as white. I think that would end up the game for me. Well, I mean, the thing is, after queen takes d5, in this position, you're, you're not obligated to take back. So, I mean, you can just play a move like this, queen c7. And now your, your idea is you're going to play here, and then you want to castle. And I think you have some compensation for the pawn because this bishop is kind of dead, and um, and and like he and like he was saying, his queen is a little misplaced, so it might take him a move or two to kind of fix the position of his queen. But I mean, I, I certainly think he he should have at least tried to take on d five. Yeah, but, but yeah, you don't have to take back. You don't have to trade this, queens. This trap. I, I need to castle then move the rock yeah exactly move. exactly okay. so you need a couple of moves to kind of fix your position but he needs a couple of moves to kind of get his queen safe as well and he also needs a couple of moves to to free this guy so it's it's yeah. very it's very double-edged so it would have been an interesting game if, if this had happened but he got a little too worried about his queen being exposed so um so yeah uh, i thought it was a good a good game but i was just too bad that 
time was a, such an issue. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for being on. I'll post this to YouTube so you guys can look at it. And thanks, um, thanks. thanks for being on. Thanks, and good game. Yeah, thanks. Good game to both you guys.